you get a puck to the ankle or a kick to the shin, you shake that off and you get back on the ice. You get back on the field. But with a brain injury, you can't do that. And I just kept on re-aggravating my concussion problems. I got this so, so bad that I got put on medical leave. Um, during that medical leave, I started practicing yoga. I had never felt so calm, so peaceful in my life. Um, one month after that, I was still recovering from my um, concussion problem. I got assaulted randomly by a gang. And I was in a coma for three and a half days, over a week of amnesia. And um, when I was able to resume physical activity, yoga was the tool that I helped heal my brain. I ended up doing 365 days of Bikram yoga. That was the yoga I was practicing at the time. Uh, I don't know if anyone out there knows Bikram yoga, but that is 90 minutes long, 105 Fahrenheit, 40% humidity. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, but in that room, my brain felt great. I felt whole again. I felt no worry. I felt present. I felt here. And I ended up using Bikram yoga every single day for 365 days to try to heal my brain. And I was trying to get back to where I was before. And along the path, I realized that we could never do that. Someone with a brain injury can't do that, but none of you can. You cannot be the person who you were before you hopped on this call. We're always changing, we're always evolving, and it's about bringing awareness to the cards we have in the now and moving forward or not. And through that 365 days, um, it awoken me to the most powerful human freedom and the greatest change making tool that we all have within us always which makes us truly superheroes, hence the title Super, The Hero Project. And that's choice. Choice, the last of human freedoms. And um, a really great book right now that talks about that is Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. And his quote, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So choice. That is like a pretty heady topic. How do I explain choice to grade three to eight students is who I work um, with this project in schools. It's a four week initiative um, that I've, I've, de I've delivered um, in Canada, the US and now online. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you over this next four weeks, what that means choice and why that is the greatest superpower. So, each week, we're going to go over a new a superpower. Are you all ready? Yes. Yeah. So the superpower we're going to discuss today, my forms are over here, is the power of breath. Do you all breathe? Everyone there, yeah, you all breathe? Well, congratulations. You are a superhero just with the ability to breathe. But... There's two types of breathing, and only one makes us a superhero. The other makes us scared, fearful, anxious, all uneasy at all times. And let's go over those. So we have two types of breath. Let's put one hand on our heart, one hand on the belly, and we're just gonna start, with, and you can, you can do it standing, you can do it seated, but wherever you are, get organized in your spine, and we're just gonna do six breaths. Six deep breaths to get us started. And try to breathe into the belly. All together now, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose or through the mouth, allowing the shoulders to relax, the face to relax. Deep in through the nose. Exhale, soften. Inhale. Exhale. Halfway there, inhale, getting the belly expand, exhale, softening, a couple more. Inhale, feeling your spine reach tall to the sky as you breathe in, creating space for the lungs to inflate. Exhale, soften. Then one more into the belly, deep in through the nose. Exhale, relax. Good. So you keep your hands on your heart and your um, belly. How do you all feel? Just six breaths. 
probably a lot more calm. Research shows just as little six breaths slows down your heart rate and resets your vibration, resets your system. So these are two types of breaths. We have our belly breath and our upper low breath. Our belly breath, how did that make you feel? Calm, relaxed, at ease. Whereas our upper low breathing is the opposite. It sends a signal to our brain that we're not safe, that we're in danger, that's our, a threat. H how does it send this to our brain? Well, we have something called the autonomic nervous system. What does auto mean? What does automatic mean? Does anyone out there know? It happens by itself. So these things, the way we breathe send signals to our brain without us even realizing. But with this awareness, we know what's going on. We know our belly breath sends a signal of rest and relax to the brain. Whereas our upper low breath, which looks like short, shallow breathing, shoulder breathing, mouth breathing, huffing and puffing, that sends a signal to your brain that you're in danger. It's called our fight or flight breath. Are you all with me? Yeah. Thumbs up. Okay, so why do we have this breathing? So our upper lobe, our fight or flight breath, is there to keep us safe, keep us safe from danger. In the olden times, it, came, it used to keep us safe when we used to live not in houses, when we used to live out in nature. It used to keep us safe from lions, tigers, eagles, snakes, fires, and in our modern world, it keeps us safe from things like fire still, traffic, um, e but even things like a stressful test at school will get you in your short, shallow breath, a stressful situation in life. Even playing sports puts you in your fight or flight, which is good, right? When we're playing sports, whether that be baseball, hockey, whatever that is for you, we want, uh, especially when we're in play, that, that fight or flight breath is, is helping us perform, quick, quickly react. It's shooting adrenaline, cortisol, and other stress chemicals to the brain. But with, when we're not in play, that's not beneficial for us to be in that fight or flight. And we'll talk a bit more about that later. Belly breath is where we should be breathing most of the time. Are, because, because where are you right now? You're at home. And are you safe at home? Almost 100% yes. Like that's probably one of the most safest places you can be. And you're with your family, with your parents. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore this breath through a mobility and yoga movement practice. And what yoga means is union. Union of the mind, the body, and the spirit. And for my teaching, the spirit means our connection with all. My connection with each and one of, every one of you, your connection with each other in the room, your connection with the air you breathe in, your connection with gravity pressing down on you, your connection with the music and the sounds you hear, your connection with the sights you see, the smells you smell, our connection with all. So what we're gonna do in this yoga practice is we're gonna practice bringing it all together. And one of, the, one of the reasons they practice yoga asanas, right? Because yo we're in yoga right now. A misconception is yoga. But no, yoga, yoga is all the time. Practices is an opportunity to find your comfort zone, which I'm going to bring you, I'm going to bring you to somewhere where you're comfortable, but then I'm going to challenge you to get a little further. I'm gonna show you an example of this. You stay seated. I'm just gonna show you an example to highlight this concept. So chair pose, this is chair pose. Or this is chair pose, okay? But if you're in chair pose and you're not breathing, you're having the worst time of your life, you're flooding stress to your brain, you've gone too far. That, that is not beneficial. So then you just take it less deep, less deep. Get to a point where you can be calm, find your peace, and then challenge yourself. And then find calm, find stillness in the storm there. So that's why yoga is a big piece of this program. It's to bring you outside your comfort zone and learn to find stillness. And when we learn how to do that in our, on our mat, 
We can learn how to do that everywhere, whether that be in traffic, in school, at home quarantined, wherever. And then the mobility piece, um, why it's important to schools and at 4 at home is we're sitting like, in chairs way too much. Like we're, that's, not, that's not natural, um, sitting in chairs, sitting in cars. So it's very important to take movement breaks all throughout the day. So what this program does, um, it gives teachers all the tools they need to implement this into their daily school life. And now you're going to have these tools for use at home. So the HERE project curriculum, which is going to be sent to you every week, you're going to have all a, a write-out of all three um, breathing exercises from today. It'll explain how to do them. You'll have a written explanation of all six mobility we do. We'll do a written explanation of all six yoga movements we do. And not only the written explanations, you'll have videos of them too. So if you forget how to do them, you can watch these videos of me performing them um, to remind you what that is. In addition to the, that, there's journaling exercises every week. There's art exercises every week and guided meditation. So those are all tools you could use. A self-care toolkit that you could bring into your home, just like teachers bring into their classroom, to really um, work together. Um, and it's great for family students together because you're keeping yourself accountable. You guys, you guys have accountabilities with you. Um, so that is uh, a explanation of the hero project. I just kind of have to, we're not going to go this long on the talk um, on the other call. I just have to explain to you what this is, what we're doing. Um, is there any questions so far? No. Are you all ready to get started? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're, I see some people on the coaches, the Hixie family. I think you guys are on a coach. Um, we're going to have to find um, some space. So have a yoga mat. Uh, the regulars are on the floor. But we need to find somewhere where we can lay down. We need somewhere where we can lay down on the floor. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay down in Shavasana. And right now I'm going to put my, my screen on big so I can see what I'm doing. So I will not be able to see you during this class. But we'll talk about uh, – we'll talk, I'll come back and we'll connect afterwards. So we're going to move for the next 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. And then we'll do some Q&As. Um, so find a spot on the floor, lay on your back, and we're going to go in a, and, and probably if you want to walk, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing this with you. So if you're a if you want to face um, the camera, so your, your feet are towards the camera so that if you need to see me, you can, but it's all very simple stuff. So just listen and you should be good with that. Um, so we're laying on our backs. Heels together, feet flop open, arms at our side, palms facing up. You close your eyes. Just as we did seated, we'll have one hand on our belly, one hand on our heart. And I just want you to notice, how are you breathing? From where does your breath originate? Where does your breath travel to? And on the exhale, what does that look like? And if you haven't already begun to do so, transfer now into your belly breathing. So deep in through the nose, feeling the belly rise like a balloon inflating. And on the exhale, the belly falls like a balloon deflating. Whenever the mind will wander, which it will, just bring awareness back to the breath, feeling the air enter through the nasal cavity, feeling the belly expand, and on the exhale, relaxing, like a balloon deflating. And again, whenever the mind wanders, which it will, that monkey chatter, different thinking, different feeling, different thoughts, anticipation, just acknowledge what's coming up. You can say thinking, feeling, Anticipation, let it go. You can say hello, or isn't that interesting? Let it go. Each exhale, feeling a little more relaxed. Feeling what that feels like to be in our rest relax, also known as the parasympathetic. 
And we're gonna try to stay in this parasympathetic all throughout this class. And when we find ourselves moving up into that fight or flight, our sympathetic nervous system, ask yourself, am I, am I in danger? And the answer, most likely no. And, it, and if you are, well then back out, back out of the pose, take it a little easier or stop and take a break. Good, bend your knees, bring the soles, the feet on the floor, close your glutes. And just windshielding your legs side to side, right and left, right and left, like windshield wipers. Not needing to analyze or judge, just notice and let go. Just be here. Be here now. Great. Stopping in the middle when you're feeling good. And then bring your knees to your chest. Give yourself a big squeeze. Head is on the floor. Chin is your chest. Take a deep breath in, feeling the belly rise like a balloon inflating. And on the exhale, relaxing. Shoulders relax, face relaxes. And just rocking side to side, side to side. Give yourself a gentle spinal release. And then stopping in the center. And since we're giving yourself a hug right now, whether we're holding onto our fingers or wrists or forearms or elbows, since we're giving yourself a hug, I want you to give yourself a compliment to yourself right now. You can say it out loud, or you can say it in your head, but give yourself a compliment. So, I am awesome, or I'm beautiful, or I am strong, or I am smart, or thank you for showing up. Whatever that is for you, thank you for doing your best. Give yourself a hug. And then roll over onto your right side, using your right arm as a pillow. And you're going to get real comfortable. Bring your knees close to your chest. Elbows towards the knees. Looks like a, like a fetus, like a baby fetus, fetal pose. Like your, your mom's belly, relax, completely at peace. Up now, we're going to breathe into our back body. So on the inhale, feeling the back body expand. And on the exhale, relax. What does that mean to you? Relax. What does stillness, what does that mean to you? And on your next exhale, allow yourself to find that place. Deep in through the nose, feeling the back body expand. And on the exhale, stillness. That is your choice. Choose to be still. Choose to surrender to gravity pressing down on you. Choose to be here now. And then when you're ready, rolling over onto your hands and knees and coming into a tabletop. Hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, like a table, tabletop pose. And we're gonna move into a breathing and moving exercise to synchronize our movement with our breath. Take a deep breath in through the nose, and on the exhale, round the spine, the tailbone tucks under like a dog tucking their tail, eyes to your belly button or your thighs, back like a scared cat. And on the inhale, your tail rises, tailbone rises, belly falls, heart opens, back like an upside down U, or a normal U. And on the exhale, Tuck your tail, round in, hands pressing forward, knees pressing back, rounding the spine. And then just moving through this on your own. On the inhale, tailbone rises, belly falls, gaze looks up back like a U. And on the exhale, round in. Can you hear your breath? You should be hearing your breath. Breathing through the nose. Maybe you're even hearing your mom or your dad or your brother's, your sister's breath. Breathe it. Kind of like an ocean wave with their spine. Good. On the next exhale, return to neutral. And then we're going to sit our hips back to our heels as best we can. Our arms are going to be forward. And head resting on the floor. Child's pose. Now, feel your breath here against your thighs. You're feeling the belly inflate. 
and you're feeling in the back body. So now we're combining our both from the four. Inhale, expanding like a balloon, and on the exhale, relaxing. The child pose is really great. It's an inversion, a slight inversion. It's sending fresh blood to our brain. So whenever you're feeling lethargic or tired, this is a great position to just come take a few breaths. Inhale, back body rise. Exhale, relax. Walk your fingertips forward, feeling that stretch in the shoulders as you relax on the exhale. And then keeping your chin tucked, we're going to round up, bow back, mid back, upper back, rounding up the spine, open the heart, upwards dog pose. And then we'll take it back down. Chin tucks, vertebrae by a vertebrae, top the spine, mid spine, Low spine, rounding it down. And then just keep on down on your own. So we're going to go do these seated spinal waves. Rounding up like an ocean wave. And then making your way back down. Learning to flow in yoga so that we can better flow in life. We can better adapt and find balance in the ups and downs that will surely come our way. That I know for sure. On the next up dog, hold it there. Core is engaged, tuck your toes under, take plank. Hold your plank. Or how are you breathing? Are you in your fight or flight? If so, are you in danger? Not likely. The floor is right underneath you. So find your calm. If you can't find your calm, lower your knees. And we're all going to lower our knees now. And we're not lowering our knees to rest. We're still engaged. My hands are still pushing into the floor. My core is squeezed. My glute is, my butt is squeezed. This is a challenge. I'm finding stillness in this plank. It's still easier modification. And on the exhale, we'll lower down. Squeezing our legs tight like a cobra tail, like a mermaid tail. We'll inhale, leading with the eyes, screw your hands in. Elbows to the hips, open the chest, the heart. Not pressing on the hands, using your low back strength. And on the exhale, lowering. Inhale, screw your hands in, elbows to the hips. Rising up. And on the exhale, lower. So I want you to make your way through this on your own. Synchronizing your movement with your breath, rising and falling, rising and falling. Good. On the next rise, holding here in Cobra. So we're holding it in Cobra, keeping our arms tight like grasshopper legs. We're not holding our breath though, we're still breathing. We're holding the pose, we're holding the asana, but we're not holding our breath. Tuck your toes under. Keep your arms squeezed, tricep push up, plank from her knees, plank from her toes, down dog. Walking out the heels, right and left, right and left, right and left, right and left, and then hold the dog. Hands pressing forward, toes pressing back. Try to tear your yoga mat into pieces or your carpet or, where, or your floor. Try to press in opposite directions. Eyes at your belly button. We'll have three breaths here. Inhale through the nose. And on the exhale, relax. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, release. One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, release. Good. And then we're going to walk our feet forwards towards our hands. And we're gonna walk out our hips. Right and left, right and left, right and left, right and left. And then we're gonna dangle here. We're gonna grab our opposite elbows. And we're just gonna dangle, like a little Christmas ornament. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. So allow yourself to relax here. Just notice it. Like maybe your fight or flight is coming up now. Are you, how are you breathing? Does anyone short shallow breathing? Are you in danger in this world? Most likely not, but this is not a normal position that we go into often. So our brain 
is wondering what's going on. Just remind your brain that it's okay with your breathing. And then hands on the floor. Pelvis tucks under, so tuck your tail. Keep your chin tucked, and we're gonna round up our spine. Vertebrae by vertebrae, low back, mid back, upper back. Open up your heart. And on the exhale, rounding forwards, vertebrae by vertebrae, like volcano, like lava coming down a volcano. Just like we're doing our seated spinal waves, we'll do standing spinal waves. Then walk out your hips, knees forward, tail tucks under, round up, low back, mid back, upper back, open up the heart. Exhale, rounding down. Walking up the hips, one leg straight, one knee bent, one leg straight, one knee bent, and then knees forward, round up, low back, mid back, upper back, open up the heart. And then find a tall standing position. How do you all feel? Great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find a mountain pose. This is standing. We're going to stand with our feet hip width distance. So our feet are in line with our hip. Maybe bring your arms out in front. Point down. That's where your feet are. And how are your feet? Often, people stand like this. But am I teaching a group of ducks or humans? That's how a duck stands. Humans stand with their feet straight. And why is that? Often we stand duck-toed because of tight hip flexors. But when we stand like this, one thing that is for sure is when you stand like this, you're gonna walk like this, at least the very first step. And the energy is coming out of my knee here, out of my hip. This is not a good angle to step. And that just adds up time after time after time after time to the hip, to the knee, to the ankle. And then you're at the gym or you're playing your sports and you get hurt. And you're like, oh, that hurt because of this. No, maybe, but likely because you're, take, you're stepping or you're running with that first foot planted wrong at the minimum every time. So let's get in the habit of standing with our feet straight. All four corners of the feet rooted in the floor. Imagine your feet are glued into the floor. Our shoulder blades will be back. Our core is engaged. Our arms are at our side, chest open, palms forward. Imagine there's roots, invisible roots in your hands tying you into the floor. And reminder, always keep engaging that core, always. It doesn't have to be squeezed 100%, but unless we're like sleeping, there should be 20, 30% engagement in the core. Um, some, you could go by, you, someone should be able to go by you and kind of give you a little tap and they should Feel some resistance there. So we're in mountain pose, shoulder blades back, standing tall. And I just want you to breathe. Deep in through the nose, feeling your spine grow tall as if there's a string on your head pulling you up. And on the exhale, relax. Good, keeping the feet glued. We're gonna shake out all our tension from our nights, from our days, from our week, from our month, from our life. Let your body free. A lot of people have struggle with this because they they have a problem just letting go. But I want you to let yourself go, shaking over to the left side, shaking over to the right side. No one can really see you. Just you and your family. You're in a safe place. Allow yourself to be free. Kind of like you're one of those inflatable men in the or women in the in the that in that area. You know about those car dealerships. You're kind of one of those just shaking yourself. Oh, good. Now we're going to flap out our wrists like your hands are butterflies. We see butterflies all over now here in the spring. So just flapping out the hands, letting the wrists loose. Good. Now we're going to take our legs in vibration. So they're going to vibrate back and forth, back and forth. And we're going to keep on into the wrists. It sounds like we're opening and closing jar lids. Good. And then in honor of where this program originated in Austin, Texas, Let's throw some lassoes out, loosening up the elbows. As you keep your legs in vibration, shake out the arms. Good, unglue your leg, shake out your leg, shake out your leg, shake out your leg. 
shake out your leg, and then we're going to bounce forward, bounce back, twist side to side, crisscross your arms, up and down, and any last movements that feels good for you, do any last shaking and vibration that you need, and then find your tall mountain pose. Good. We're going to get into some neck mobility. Today's focus is on the spine. So we're going to bring our chin to the chest. And then eyes to the sky. Not needing to go all the way back. Just partially. Chin down. Eyes up. And staying rooted into the floor with your feet, with your hands. Good. Now we're going to go side to side. We'll look over to our left. We'll look over to our right. Look over to our left, and to the right. Good, we're going to go back slightly, and then ear to the shoulder. Back to the center, back slightly, other ear down. Maybe a couple more times, slightly back, ear down, slightly back, ear down. Good, and then the chin to our chest, and we're gonna do a circle. Go all the way around, now that we've prepared ourselves. And we get back to the center, chin up, and then we go the other way. One more time each side. Great, so that's, uh, Cars controlled articular rotation. It's getting, it's moving our joints, and it's in, and then we're gonna all throughout the week. With today's spine week two is upper body, week three is lower body. Um, it's important that we attend to our joints, and you can just it's just something you should, I recommend every morning is your joint your joint mobility. Um, it's so important how we move our neck because when we are able to move our neck, we're able to see more around us. Our lens expands and it's always important to expand our lens okay we're going to move into a superhero pose shoulder blades back hands on your hips how does that how does this feel probably pretty powerful this is sending the signal just like your breath and we're going to go over this in week two the power of posture this is sending a signal to your brain without even realizing that i am safe i am strong I am confident just by standing like this. We'll take a deep breath in, feeling the spine grow tall. And on the exhale, we're going to hinge forward. We're going to take the body into a number seven, bending the knees as much as you need, feeling that in the hamstrings. And then core is engaged, squeeze the glutes. Find your center, pelvis taps under, find your neutral spine. Take a deep breath in, and on the exhale, hinging. Inhale up. Exhale, hinge in. Pick it up. And then find your mountain. One last mobility. We're going to do a Tai Chi twist. Take your feet slightly wider than your hips. And we're going to shake out our arms. And we're going to imagine we're just going to, we're just going to flow with the wind. So we're going to twist, Tai Chi twist. We're going to pivot on our back foot. Loosening up the spine. Remembering to breathe. Great, shake it out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to close this all off by putting everything all together in something called the sun salutation A. And this is what yogis have been doing for thousands of years to salute the sun, to salute their day, to get the mind, the body, their spirit in union so that they can be their best selves. They can be their hero selves. So let's stand tall in mountain. Inhale, arms overhead, upward reaching mountain. Relax your shoulders. Exhale, swan dive down. Swan dive down. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Hands are on the floor, or on your ankles, or on your shins, or on your knees. Back is long. So imagine there's a stick on your back. Exhale, plant your hands on the floor. Step back to a plank. Take a deep breath in, shoulders forward, lowering down, whether it be from your toes or from your knees. Take a deep breath in, cobra rise, or press into the floor, up dog. Exhale, core engage, plank into down dog. Walk it out, right and left, right and left. Right and left, right and left. Hold your dog. We'll do a few breaths here. In through the nose, out through the nose. Find your calmness, your stillness in the storm. Good, walk your feet forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Back is long, shoulder blades draw back, long spine. And on the exhale, suck your stomach in, squeezing your body one piece. Submit your thighs, chest towards your knees, Face towards your shins as best you can. Inhale, chair pose. And hold it here. How are you breathing? You don't know how long we're going to be here. Find your calm. Find your stillness. Find your strength. If you can't do it from low, which takes a lot of work, find it where you need. And then drive through the heels, arms up, upper reaching mountain. Arms down the side. That's the sun salutation. We're going to flow through that a few more times. Y'all with me? Yes, let's go. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to your plank. Core's engaged, glutes engaged. Take a deep breath in, shoulders forward, lowering down, whether that be from your toes or from your knees, lowering down with control. Imagine that stick still on your back. Inhale, engage your legs, rise up, cobra, or press into the floor, up dog. Exhale, down dog, pedal it out. Tear the mat in two, hands forward, balls of the feet pressing back. Great, and then feet come forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair. How long are we going to be here this time? Finding your calm, finding your stillness, and then driving through the heels, arms down the side. So let's do that one more time. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to a plank. Deep breath in, shoulders forward, lowering down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Pedal it out. Holding the dog. Are you breathing? Lowering into tabletop. Sending your hips back to your heels. This time we're going to take wide-legged child's pose. So we're going to take our knees wide, a different variation, and seeing how that feels. So the knees as wide as we can. Head is on the floor. Breathe. Rejuvenating, relaxing, refreshing, stillness. All right, coming out of your child's pose, coming to a seat. So we're sitting cross-legged on the floor, crisscross, applesauce. And you always feel free to bring props um, with yourself this week, next week, to use pillows, blankets. So you can take the pillow and you can put it under your seat, under your tailbone, just to help prop you up in a more um, optimal position or blanket, but not necessary though. We're gonna do one last pose, we're gonna bring out our spine. We're gonna inhale, stretch up, 
And on the exhale, we'll turn and twist our body, leading with our eyes, open, over to our right, our left hand, we'll come across our thigh. Inhale, create space so we can breathe. And on the exhale, plant your hand behind you, palm down, fingers facing away from you, and turning to twist. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, twisting. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, twist. 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 Unwind. Other side. Inhale, create space. Reaching your right arm across. On the exhale. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, turning to twist more. Left hand behind you, palm facing away. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, twist. 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 Unravel. Great. So we're going to close the final breathing exercise. We're going to um, add on to our belly breathing. So one thing I know for sure is that, and I think you will all agree, that there's billions of people around the world right now, billions of people, sending you good vibrations, sending you peace, sending you well wishes, sending you love. Whether that be in prayer, thought, those vibes are being sent to you by billions around the world. So we're going to tap into that as we lay down our back to close off class. So we're going to lay down our back. Just as we begin, we conclude, arms at our side, palms facing up, heels together, feet flop open, one hand on our belly, one hand on our heart, and we're going to get into our Belly breath, in through the nose, belly rise like a balloon inflating, and on the exhale, the belly falls, relaxing, release, let go. So just a few belly breaths here. And then we're gonna add on to this. We're gonna add on our coherence breathing technique. So on the inhale, feeling the belly rise, and on the exhale, as the belly falls and the heart melts, bring attention to your heart, because we're gonna use it next. On the inhale, I want you to imagine as your belly rises, all that love, all that peace, all that safety, all those good vibrations being sent to you by billions around the world to enter through your heart. And once they enter through the heart, flood through all parts of your body. And on the exhale, sending those feelings of well wishes, good vibration of love, of peace, of stillness, of whatever that is that you need, send that out. And on the inhale, as your belly rises, taking whatever you need back in, everything that you're looking for, that you seek, you have already within. And if you don't feel you do, well, people are sending to you, so enjoy that in with your breath. And on the exhale, sending that good vibration, sending that peace, that love out to your loved ones next to you, to your neighbors, to your families, to your friends, to the world, whoever you wish, but give it all away. Because one thing I know is you are in abundance. You are in abundance of everything you need. It's being sent to you always. It's already there. Inhale, belly rise. Filling yourself up with love, peace, stillness. Take that into the heart. Send it everywhere in the body. And on exhale, sending your love out to your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your teacher, your friend, your whoever. Relaxing. A couple more breaths. Inhale, belly rocks. Exhale, heart melts, softening. And then as we begin, we conclude. Bring the knees close to the heels. And then just rocking the legs side to side, noticing how you feel this time, where you may be a bit more calm, a bit more peaceful, a bit more open in the hips, a bit more loose in the spine. And then as we did at the start, give yourself a big squeeze, side to side rock. Since you're hugging yourself, compliment number two, give yourself another compliment. We can never send our, that self, we can never have enough too much self-love. So give yourself another compliment. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for doing your best. Thank you for being here now.
And then roll him over onto your side using your bottom arm as a pillow. Deep in through the nose, feeling the back body expand. And on the exhale, finding your place of stillness, of peace, of relaxation. Where is that for you? What does that look like for you? And finding it there. Deep in through the nose, back body expand. Exhale, soften. One more time, inhale. Exhale, release. And then when you're ready, Make your way back up to a seat. Welcome back. And finding a seat. And we close, we close yoga class with a namaste. And what that means, namaste, it means the teacher in me, the love in me, the light in me, the spirit in me the God in me, the whatever that is in me, that is in all of us, sees, honors, bows to that in you. Namaste. How are you all feeling? Take it away, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah, we, we love it. So if anybody has any questions about anything, about uh, the downloads, the breathing, what the next three weeks are gonna look like, please ask. I know we covered something with Derek, the first one, uh, first question that a lot of people had was around sports. So we have a lot of kids that do activities, play sports. And it, we were talking about how to, to integrate or how to use for the kids, the belly breathing um, to stay calm, whether you, since you're Canadian, we use the hockey example like in between shifts, whether it could be in between classes, it could be in between uh, sections on a test. Um, but how, how can that be used in the kid's life every day? Yeah, absolutely. So now we have this awareness, right? Um, who chooses your breath? Me. Yeah, who else? Just you, right? The, like your mom doesn't choose your breath. Your, your dad doesn't choose your breath. No one chooses your breath but you. So with this awareness, we have two types of breathing. We have our fight or flight. That's our sympathetic breath. Or we have our rest, relax. That's our parasympathetic breath. Um, kids, what message does our fight or flight breath send to our brain? Fear, uneasiness. Yeah, uneasy, danger, that there's threat, like we're not safe. Like our life is in danger. Um, what, the, what message does our belly breath send to our brain? Calm, react, relaxness. Yeah, no danger, no threat. And then the stress chemicals come down. And, and when we don't have, and when we did not have awareness of this, you didn't have awareness of that. That's not your fault. But with great power, what's the next word, Marvel fans? Responsibility. Great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. Now that you understand the power of breath, it's not you. So when, you, when, you're, when you're fight or flight breathing, that's your choice. That's your choice to be in a constant state of anxiety, unease, distress throughout your day. That, that's your choice. You could choose to be there. You could choose to be here. Um, in sports, for example, hockey, when we're on the ice, yeah, you want to be in your fight or flight. Like, otherwise, like, you're going to get hurt. So you're going to get hit by a puck. You're going to body check. Like, you're not going to be a good player if you're, if you're just doo -doo -doo -doo, calm. So you want to be in that fight or flight. But when you're on the breath, <laughs> that's not helping. So when you're not in play, whether that be on the bench in hockey or, for example, soccer. So say you're, you're, you're a defender. And the play is on the complete other end of the field. Like you, you're not needing to, that's, that's your time to get into that calm breath, slow things down so that when you're needing to react, you can switch back into there. And then we're just not in the stress the whole time. Same thing with volleyball or baseball. You don't see a baseball player go up to the, the coach. Yeah. Go up to, go up to the bath and be very stressful. They're, they're out there very relaxed, keeping calm. 
Um, so yeah, that's how we can use that to sports is know when it's been, when is our fight or flight beneficial for us and when is it not? And the same thing with school, is it beneficial for us when we're writing a test to be upper like stuck in the chest? And you all know that feeling, whether you're a kid or parent, when you're in your, your chest is very uneasy. It's making a test a lot harder. The test is, might be hard as it is. Well, breathing here is making it harder. So choosing to breathe into the belly so we can have a bit more clarity. So maybe we can see this test from a different lens, a lens of calm rather than a lens of fear. Yeah, that makes sense, guys. Yeah. I love it. That's the one thing for the kids that I think, we think, is huge just the awareness and the knowing and honestly for adults too right i think i've just been turned on to this in the last few years but it makes such a difference in what we're dealing with every day the anxiety just as much absolutely and then this is why i created this program for kids because I, i'm out there awakening heroes and i choose to work with children on this because i have better hope for them than i do you you adults <laughs> no offense uh, <laughs> And the, the reason for that is because, like myself, I, um, or like however old you are, whether you're 30, 40, 50, you have 30 years, 40 years, 50 years of being unaware, of not paying attention to your breath. So for you to develop those new habits is going to be hard because your default mode is going to be that anxious breath. That's the reality you're used to. But kids, their brains are pliable. All our brains are pliable, but they have less negative reps. So it's easy for them to create a new normal. But we all can create a new normal. And that new normal starts with awareness. Awareness of what your cards are in the now. And the, your cards in the now are your cards. So you, you look at them and you move forward or you don't. Because that's the option. When I got assaulted, when I got my brain injury, um, I didn't know that was going to happen. I was having a, a great time. And then the next thing I knew, I was waking up in a hospital bed uh, over a week later. My life changed. And I have a few podcasts that Dave's going to share with you that could get more into that story. Um, there, maybe there's some, some, some nuggets in there for you. Um, so, yeah, that's why I chose to work with kids. But this is applicable for everyone. And this is great for families to do because you have built-in accountability buddies. So I challenge you throughout this, this quarantine time, Take movement breaks throughout the day. Take breath breaks throughout the day. And now that this vocabulary has been established in your household, you can say, how are you breathing? What message are you sending to your brain? And this is going to be universally understood by everyone because you all said you understand who chooses the breath. You. You, you understood the fight or flight. You understood the rest relax. You have the tools. With great power comes great responsibility. Rise, hero, rise. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Derek. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So we will see you next week. Yeah, right on. Thank you. Yes, thank thanks, you. everyone, for coming. Have fun breathing. Have fun moving. Have fun being you. Thank you. <laughs>